This week, what do we have for this week? Oh, right. It is week. It is the fourth week of 2014. That's our episode. I remember, we are doing our episodes by the week. So, uh, there's no confusion as to when this is done and when this sort of fits into the schedule. Um, we are doing this on a more regular basis. I am getting the production notes done on a more regular basis. That's why we're doing this more. So, now we're going to have... In this episode, we're going to have my style. Then we'll have the second episode, the second segment will be uh, your health. And your health is a focus on, uh, as I said, on your health. Because I noticed a lot of uh, beauty gurus are talking about health. And there is a lot of confusion about there, out there about diets and so on and so forth. And all the healthy issue stuff. And the third segment is going to be a variety of things. Um, this segment, uh, this, this, uh, week, and possibly next week, we're going to look at IMATS. I'm going to try to follow IMATS, uh, as it goes around the globe. So, this week, uh, we'll be looking at IMATS, uh, in L.A., L uh, L IMATS L L.A., and, um, but we're doing it from a different point of view, because I don't actually travel anywhere. Uh, if you know anything about anime, or what an otaku is, I'm kind of an otaku, I'm a geek, and we don't go anywhere, but we do think we do travel through our computer virtually, uh, seeing the sites through other uh, YouTubers. And so what I did is I used other YouTubers to sort of see the sites at uh, and, uh, IMATS. And uh, this is what we're going to look at. Welcome to this segment of, of my style. This, uh, this, this is the first uh, segment. Well, not really the first segment. Uh, this is the first segment of uh, uh, Beauty and the Geek. And we're talking about my style. And my style is, I really, I said, this is what I said before. I'm not just simply going to sort of sit by and watch the beauty community. I'm going to try to participate a little bit in it. And what I decided to do is I actually decided to go into fashion design. Just a little bit. Not fully into fashion design. But I am in industrial area. I'm in it. Sorry, I'm in an industrial neighborhood, and that gives me the opportunity because there is a clothing supplier down the street from me. I went and talked to the clothing supplier. They supply major uh, places like Walmart, Sears, and other stores like that. And I asked them if they had access to uh, uh, manufacturers, distributors, so on and so forth, and that if I were able to bring in designs, and they would have help me sort of get these designs out. And they said, yeah, sure, no problem. That There wasn't a problem doing that. So uh, I uh, came back and uh, started planning that I'm going to turn one of my rooms into a sewing design room. There's a room that there is a room, a spare room I use simply for uh, storage. And so that I'm going to take that room that's used for storage and uh, I'm going to uh, empty it out, clean it up, fix it up. And turn it into a uh, sewing and design room. So that's the way I'm going to do that. I looked at my my sort of the type of person I am, the type of things that I like, and I found a style in Japan. And you'll see the the, the graphics as they pop up here. And these will be rotating graphics here. And these are known as the, in Japan they ha they have the sort of a famous subway station uh, or, or train station called Harajuku. Uh, there's a whole style that comes out of there known as uh, the street clothing from Japan. And it fits it fits in kind of with my style a little bit. Because I am unusual, I'm not the standard person. So as I started looking around and seeing what 
the uh, what the outfits were, and they're primarily girls in here. They're primarily girls in this, and they're they're all on the sort of the cute side of things. And what it does is this type of style harkens back to the days of uh, harkens back to the days of uh, Victorian the Victorian era. The, is designed not to show a lot of skin, it, so it's very conservatively dressed. But they also have, what they've done, is they've added a lot of individual touches to this, to this stuff. And what I like to see is I like to see, it, well, in many cases you have a lot of pink in there. What I do like to see is I like to see a variation use of color, because, you know, just because you like a color doesn't necessarily mean, means it look good. If you're a dark person and you're all in pink, without any contrast to it, then it's too much pink, it's too much, and it doesn't really go with necessarily your personality. Uh, so, the same thing can be same, said, said, the same thing can be said for dark colors. If you're a person who, you know, uh, is a light bubbly person and you have that personality, then you shouldn't be wearing all dark clothes. And unfortunately for guys, if you look at, and, and, and I was just watching this just this week actually, uh, the Grammy Awards. They, I was watching the Style Hall Channel's Grammy Awards uh, presentation, and if you notice the guys' uh, outfits, most of the guys' outfits, you have one choice: black or black. <laughs> you know, and th that's what it is. It's all for guys. There isn't much of a color choice, but where for girls, you, you have a lot of different color choices. You have a lot of different styles, and the one I seem to be sort of favoriting towards or moving towards is this. A style called Kawhi Lolita. I mean, I have the whole the whole thing that I'm that I'm showing here. This is part of the Lolita style. It's and we will be going into this further because this is where I intend to sort of head. And you'll see how I I uh, know I see well we'll see how I can uh, how I can adjust this particular style. To my particular uh, needs, to my style, and bring it out on the sewing machine, and then if we can bring out different designs to the clothing manufacturer, to, to the to the to the supplier, if I get to my contact, if I can do that, and how it goes from there on there on out. So in other words, in the my style segment, we'll, you'll be seeing the real attempt here to create a fashion label, to create some fashion design out there. Uh, so I'm not necessarily going to be a background background observer to this. I'm actually going to get into the beauty community and sort of participate in fashion, participate in style, and so on and so forth. And I think this, this is kind of, this you know this is something that kind of suits me here. Uh, but the thing is, you do have to be aware that you know how colors look on you. Sometimes you know colors look good on you sometimes things look bad on you and you've got to be aware of what is what and how what, what works for you and what doesn't work for you and I said just because you like something does not necessarily mean that it looks good on you so where we're heading with this is a little tricky because it does take a bit of time to uh, get used to everything and I said I've got this these these, um, these general pictures here these are general Lilitas uh, that are sort of rotating, in, in, it's rotating in, in a particular sequence here. Uh, I've got this because we are looking at the uh, Lolita as the lead in style. And what that means is that we're going to have to look at more of the Lolita style, go into more of the definition of the Lolita style, see how it's defined, how it shapes out, what are, and, and this is what happens in Japan when you have counterculture. You don't have one culture, one counterculture. You have many sub countercultures, and so the same thing with Lolita. Lolita is broken up into a variety of different, different sub subcultures that often bleed into cosplay and anime. And so we'll get into all these different things here. And this is actually appropriate for IMAT because if you're doing cosplay and anime, uh, this is where you use IMAT for because IMAT is, is is actually aimed at the makeup artist, not necessarily at the beauty guru. The beauty guru is there. As sort of an appendage or a component of IMATS. It is not necessarily the uh, entire focus of IMATS. 
So uh, I think this is where this will actually work well with IMAS going into cosplay, going to anime, uh, because it will go into a lot of the sort of uh, character development uh, and stuff like that. So I, what I will do is I I will uh, go into this further into, into um, uh, these uh, the Lolita style and see where we can go from there. Anyways, it's time to go on to our next segment here, and that's the, uh, the your health. So we'll be back in a few seconds with uh, your health. Welcome to uh, the segment of uh, your health. Your health is not uh, a segment uh, to be taken lightly. It's something that you do need to research. You need to discuss with your doctor if you plan to follow any of the devices here. Um, the advice given here is I am a researcher, a medical researcher. I do a lot of medical research. I have my MD in medical research. Medical research in terms of your MD is different than a practitioner. While you do and can pra practice uh, medicine with, uh, with the uh, research-based MD, it is, however, primarily aimed at research. It's aimed at doing work that is not yet test properly tested and is not for standard use. However, if you feel, and this is the way you should for any approach to anything that's medical, take your notes, write stuff down, and then start comparing. Do your research, do your homework, and then proceed from there. And of course, if anything seems to bother you, that things don't seem right in terms of what you're doing for yourself, then you need to consult a doctor or you need to sort of stop what you're doing and get back to the uh, to what, what you were normally doing beforehand. So this segment here comes about because of seeing so many um, uh, beauty gurus out there giving health advice, uh, going on different diets. And it, a lot of the diets, these diets are not, properly defined. Diet is, has nothing to do with losing weights. Diet is simply the way you eat. That's it, it's a defined way of uh, way you eat. So let's say you have a seafood diet. A seafood diet means you're primarily eating seafood. And if you have uh, let's call it an agrarian diet. This is this is going into a little bit of history. If you have an agrarian diet, that means you're primarily primarily a farmer. That means your number the amount of seafood you have is very little. The amount of grains that you have is very high. So, uh, this is the difference between, uh, this sort of gives you an illustration of the term diet. And I've got it up here. This is a definition of the term diet. Uh, and this is what we'll be using. We'll be using our blackboard, which is to the right. It's an interactive overlay graphic. And we'll be talking more about the, uh, the importance of things and going into what is what in terms of diets. So the one I looked at uh, that sort of sort of spurred this on and brought this forward a little faster was um, I went by the channel uh, the Lady Dottie Way, and that's uh, Davida Gallagher. And I have a link. I'll have a link here to her web page and her, 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 her YouTube channel and particularly the video. And um, she's talking about vegan diets, and veganism is, is a lot like vegetarian, but it's it's a lot more strict than in terms of uh, vegan is on the more extreme edge of vegetarianism, and of course, even within vegans, there are different differentiations between what you're supposed to eat and what you're not supposed to eat. Uh, but the thing is, is that she was talking about, and this is what a lot of uh, uh, vegetarians and vegans alike talk about. They talk about proteins, getting enough proteins in your body. Uh, uh, to replace the protein that you would normally have in meat. But happen, what happens is that the, the, that the discussion doesn't probably doesn't promptly deal with some of the, um, the chemistry issues that arise when you're dealing with uh, with intake of food. Because there's a difference between intake of food and uptake of food. Intake of food is the amount of food that you bring in. Uptake of food is the amount of food that your body actually absorbs and uses. So what happens is, is that when you eat, you take in a certain amount of food. 
over a period of time, your body digests it, goes through the digest the, the, the GI or the gastrointestinal system, which does the digestion. As it goes through the digestion system, and you can see it here as well, I'll put, I'll put the digestion digestive system up, the GI system up. At certain points within the system, you have breakdown, but also you have absorption, absorption of nutrients. And that's particularly the function of the small intestine and all the intestine itself generally. Throughout the intestine, you have uptake of nutrients. And these are the essentials that your body needs. The function to grow, to repair itself, and generally to live. What the body does not take up, the body leaves within the intestine and eventually it exits the body in the lower intestine and the large intestine by the colon. And this is the digestive process. The problem with beans is while pound for pound, or, or let's do it on a mass basis, because pound is mass. If you talk about kilograms and weight, you're wrong, because kilogram is not weight, kilogram is mass. Mass and weight are two different things. Weight is the force of gravity pulling down on a particular mass. That's what weight is. Weight is gravity specific. So, to give an example. Let's get this toy Batmobile here, right? I have a toy Batmobile. Its tendency is to fall, and it's falling as I drop it. Let's see here, as I drop it, but it bounces back again. It, it falls as I drop it under the, under the force of gravity. Gravity's pulling it down, and it falls to this point here, or to this point here, wherever you said your bottom to be. What happens is, weight is... The, act, the force of gravity, which pulls it down, but it's also the mass of the car, the amount of material in the car. This car has mass measured in grams or kilograms. If it's a larger thing, you measure it in kilograms. If it's a smaller thing, like the car like this, you would more than likely than not weigh it, weigh it in grams. Uh, same thing with your food. Your food, uh, your nutrients, are actually, because they are very tiny, are weighed in milligrams. And in some cases, grams. The total food amount is weighed in grams, while the nutrient uptakes because nutrient uptake because it is smaller, significantly smaller than the uh, the overall mass that you're putting into your body. The nutrient uptake is in milligrams. In other words, a large chunk of the food that you're eating is not going to be absorbed by the body, but it rather is simply going to pass through the body and out. The exit. In other words, it's going to come in and go out without being taken up. The key here, if you're on a diet, if you're trying to design a health diet, is you want to get the most, you're not looking for the most uh, amount, your, your, your mass amount. You don't care about the intake as much as you care about the uptake. So, yes, beans, gram for gram, tons of protein. But in terms of uptake, the amount your body actually uses and can use is, is significantly less than meat. And that's where the problem is. It's not the amount of protein. It's the uptake of protein. That's where the issue is. And this is what has to be, has to, has to be realized is that the body's ability to deal with vegetable proteins is not the same as its ability to deal with animal proteins. And this is what makes animal proteins significantly superior to vegetable proteins is, is, is the uptake value. So if you want to replace beans and greens as your proteins, then you have to find a way to increase the uptake of the protein that you're taking in. It's not a matter of the amount that you're putting in. It's the, it's, it's, it's the uptake. So you need to find ways, and th this is going to be done in science, you need to go into a little bit of organic chemistry, to find out ways to break down proteins. How does that protein break down into usable components? And these are typically done with acids. So you can add acids. What, what, what acids can you use? Any fruit juice is a good ads, acid. The sugars, the simple sugars, not, and again, we'll get to go into this more in more on a more detailed basis about sugar. The sugar is not all the same. There are a variety of types of sugar in the body. And some are good and some are bad. The mono and disaccharides are necessary, particularly if you're on a vegetarian diet. A mono and disaccharide is essential 
to have along with your proteins in order for the proteins to break down and be taken up by the body. In other words, the more uh, mono and disaccharides you have with your, with your beans, in terms of gram for gram, the larger your uptake is going to be. But there is a limit. There's still a limit that you have to test out with your body. And every body is going to be a little different. They're not always going to be the same. The amount of food that you, the amount of protein that you can uptake that the body can process is going to be dependent on the person and the person's digestive system. Now the problem with this diet here, the beans, greens, and the increased monosaccharides and disaccharides, and that's basically from fruits. So in other words, along with your beans and greens as your regular meals, you have to add a good portion of fruit. Problem. The beans, greens, and fruit are heavily acidic and they're gonna t it's going to tax your body a lot. It's going to put a lot of pressure on your body. And this is where the problem comes in. You can actually wear out your body. You can cause things like ulcers if you push your body too far. And this is something that really has to be taken care of. It has to be looked at on a more careful basis. And if you're not, care if you're not careful, you can wind up in the hospital. And I'll explain more about that in next week's segment on your health as we go further into diet, into how to eat healthy, how to look at the chemistry behind this and deal with things on a more on, on a better basis. In our next segment, next segment coming up, is we're going to go in, into IMAS, our IMAS uh, virtual visits. In other words, we're going to use um, a variety of different YouTubers to go take a look at IMATS and see all the fun there. And uh, so, yeah, see you in the next segment. All right, take it easy. <laughs> Alright, welcome back to the last segment, segment C, or the third segment, <laughs> and we're going to do IMATS 2014, in particular we're doing LA IMATS 2014, and Otaku's view, and Otaku is, um, or Otaku is, uh, <laughs> uh, a Japanese, a Japanese word for the term geek, so, and because you spend most of the time as an otaku on the computer, uh, and you see everything either through uh, YouTube or some form of web experience, uh, that's how you view the entire world. And so this is how we're going to do IMATS. We're going to do it the geek view. We're going to do it through the computer. And that means channel visits. In other words, uh, we're going to see IMATS through the vlog, through the vlogs of others. And in particular, we have two vlogs that we're looking at. We're looking at either more Christie's and uh, Miss Megan vlogs. Those are the two uh, vloggers that we're primarily going to follow right now. We, or we did for this week anyways. Um, and more Christie is Strawberry Electric. That's her channel on YouTube, her, her beauty channel. And Miss Megan vlog is Miss Megan Makeup. And I will put the information here. <laughs> so, yep, you can see interactively on the graphics here. Uh, who I'm talking about. And the first day, uh, and this is actually the first one that sort of popped up, is uh, More Christie. And just to let you know, IMATS is basically, uh, I found IMATS through the beauty gurus, but IMATS I found out is not specifically t towards beauty. IMATS is specifically towards makeup. And I had the, the thing for the acronym, but I can't remember what it is <laughs> right now. Uh, so I will give you that in the next next episode because we will be still talking IMATS in the next episode because while I'm doing the specific vloggers this week, uh, what I'll be doing is then after I've done the specific vloggers here, I'm going to go out and do uh, an IMATS tour, uh, take a look at uh, LA, uh, uh, take a look at uh, M, uh, <clears throat> sorry, take a look at IMATS LA doing a YouTube search. So right now we're doing through we're doing through the vlogs and then after that we're gonna do through uh, we're gonna go through uh what you call up <laughs> through YouTube search. Through YouTube search. That's for next week. Anyways, um the we started off I started off with the IMS vlog and this is kinda of the way I'll always sort of uh start off things. Things pop up on the radar on your suggestions 
on what to watch or on your subscription feed. And what popped up in the subscription feed uh, is more Christy, and she was talking about uh, IMATS. And so the first day, you see her at Lindsay's apartment. Lindsay is, uh, and I had to look for this. Lindsay's uh, living like Lindsay's. Um, that, that's her. Is living like Lindsay is her uh, YouTube channel, her beauty channel in terms of the vlogging channel. Her beauty channel is Beauty Baby Forty Four. Now I think that I, I will. I, I definitely will have to go into this later on. Is going to some of the connection between the different vloggers because a lot of the beauty gurus know each other through the internet, through YouTube. So uh, they are kind of connected to each other. And this is sort of what I will go into in uh, later episodes of Beauty and the Geek. Go into uh, who knows who uh, and who often meets up with who uh, uh, at beauty conventions oh, in, terms of, in terms of the beauty gurus. So what happens? You see uh, on the first day of uh, Lindsay's vlog, you see uh, Lindsay, her, her arriving at Lindsay's apartment. You see them... And they do, they do this a lot. They go out and eat a lot. I, I know they are beauty gurus, but they, they they do go out and eat quite a bit. Um, it's either Starbucks, it's um, a variety of different restaurants. Like right now, uh, the, the first one, they were, they were at the Grove. Uh, that's a place, I think, in, I think in L.A. or something like that. It's, it's one of the more expensive areas. It, it's, uh, I know the Grove from uh, Totally Spies. And I think it's uh, I think it's uh, Clueless when it was a regular TV series. I know that I know that it's in the more expensive area that it's some somehow related to Beverly Hills, but I don't know exactly how it's related to Beverly Hills. That's something I'll have to look up look up and sort of check that out and see uh, what's up with that. Anyways, uh, so she talks about the first day, her first day there. Then the second uh, day there, she talks about. Um, uh, being at IMAT, she actually shows you about being at IMAT. I was talk about be, being at IMAT, and uh, then of course lunch, and then there's a whole variety of parties they go to. And then she's because uh, I think both Lindsay and uh, uh, more Christie are somehow connected with Awesomeness TV. That they were at the 17 Awesomeness TV party. Then they went from the from there to they went to the Pop Sugar Tea party, and then to the next party. Uh, and then from there, they went to the Sigma party. And at the end of the second video, they were showing the swag bag. And apparently when you go... Well, I know from, from, from the computer conventions that when you walk around the exhibit, uh, that a variety of different booths, these exhibitors give out different gifts. But apparently, these gifts are a lot more at these parties here, particularly if you're a beauty guru... And you go to these, and you're, and you're invited to these particular parties that these quote, quote unquote gift bags, which are basically, if you go to a, a birthday party, if you remember going to a birthday party, and you left the party, there are these loot bags. That, in other words, these are the these were the gifts that were given to the people who attended the party. Well, this is what a swag bag is apparently, and she was they were showing actually the uh, all the different beauty gurus at uh, at uh, Lindsay's apartment at the end of the evening were showing their uh, swag bags uh, from the next party. And it was literally filled with makeup. Uh, I think more than... Could have, I, I mean, that was, that's a huge amount of makeup that I saw in there. Uh, and um, it was, you know, it, it looked like to be, a, you know, a very nice time, you know. Uh, they were having a, a pretty good time at, uh, at IMATS. Then the third day of IMATS, um, again, they're at the Grove. This is more Christie's uh, vlogs. And walking around the Grove, shopping, uh, talking. They ended up at this place, uh, the, the coffee bean for a snack. And then that's kind of the end of the, vlog, the vlogs, kind of in, in there. And uh, that's the end of more Christie's vlogs. To get something a little bit more on this, but I, I didn't really see, see that... Too many people vlog uh, uh, in that apartment. Too many, although there were a lot of blogger, vloggers in the apartment and beauty gurus, not a lot of vlogging occurred between all of them. The other one who vlogged a lot uh, from that same apartment is Miss Megan. Miss Megan vlogs. Uh, she's from Atlanta, Georgia, apparently, 
And um, what happens is that um, you see her on her vlogs, she has a five day vlog. She vlogged for five days. But her vlogs are significantly different from, uh, or su sufficiently different from uh, more Christie's vlogs so that you can sit through them and watch them and get a di different sense of experience. And uh, from Miss Megan, you have, you have five days. You have her uh, departing from Atlanta, Georgia and flying to L.A. You have her showing up at uh, Lindsay's apartment. And then doing a, uh, what a lot of uh, beauty gurus do, doing a room tour. So she did a room tour, an apart or I should say an apartment tour. Uh, and then on her second day of vlog, you act, and this is the cool part here. And this is why if you have a lot of vloggers in one place, it's actually pretty cool because while some vloggers will get some things, if you have enough vloggers vlogging at a particular place, you can get a better sense of what's going on here because what happens here is that with more Chrissy, I didn't really know when she arrived and when she left. But what happens here with Miss Megan vlogs, you see the first day that, that Miss Megan is there, and this is basically over the weekend from Friday to Monday. Uh, you see that um, in the first day, uh, more Christie isn't there. But what you do see on the second day of, of uh, Miss Megan vlogs, uh, her videos, on her second day at IMATS, what do you see? You see the arrival of more Christie. In other words, she's vlogging more Christie as she's coming in. So, it's actually pretty cool there. But the thing is, she doesn't stay hanging out with more Christie. What she ends up doing is she ends up going to uh, 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 Venice Beach and then into, Ven and then into then to Beverly Hills for dinner. And so she vlogs all of that. So you get to, you get to see all these different things. Uh, and the thing is, the rest of the vloggers didn't really come along. There were some vloggers that came along, but most of the vloggers ended up uh, sort of just hanging out in the apartment or going out someplace. Apparently, where did they go the first day? Uh, the first day, oh yeah, the first day, Lindsay and her friends, and well, the, the, they did they did go to Beverly Hills. They went to the Grove, so uh, that's kind of how you can sort of uh, uh, adjust things in terms of where who went where. Uh, the third day, what you have you have her at the IMATS uh, in, in the exhibit hall. At her meet, her meetup where she meets up a lot of a lot of her fans, and but that is that that's about it. You have her, you don't have her doing what, uh, um, what um, what more Chrissy does, and you, what happens is, is that she ends up skipping most of the parties and only going to the la the later Sigma party. Now, I think I forgot to talk about the Sigma party. Uh, well, I, yeah. I forgot to talk about the Sigma party. More Christie went to the Sigma party. So what happens here is that you you see Miss Megan uh, Miss Megan vlogs. You see that her just go to the one that one party late at night and sort of skip all the other parties in between. And she goes about and does a variety of different things. You get to see the apartment. You get to see uh, what she does during the day. You know, it's it's, it's a it's a pretty good uh, uh, a pretty good. Uh, uh, Difference or or or, or, or pretty good pretty good video in terms of that is different seeing different aspects of that weekend according to different vloggers. Uh, then of course uh, she goes out and doesn't stay. Does, I don't. She thinks she's with these uh, the other vloggers uh, more Christy a lot. She's out with another group of vloggers that are also there at the apartment, uh, and she ends up at um, going for breakfast at this place called. Uh, the Pantry, which is an organic restaurant. Uh, I think, again, in some place, I'm not really too sure. So I still got to sort of figure this stuff out, where, where everybody went in, in, in that whole L.A. area there. So this is sort of my, my first dip into this. I do have to go back uh, this week, and uh, as I'm, as this video gets out there, get up in the, in the fifth week and sort of figure out where everyone went, where everyone went and what everything is there. i got to find out specifically how the Grove relates to Beverly Hills and everything else around there. Uh, and I'll come back and give you that information. And then, I'm gonna tell, then I'll, I'll also look into um, who else did what there uh, at IMATS, IMATS LA, uh, by going through the YouTube, YouTube search and l doing a particular search on IMATS LA 
2014. That will give me a list of videos to watch, and then from there, I can sort of uh, figure out uh, what's what and who's where. <laughs> and the beauty in the geek is me, a geek, trying to sort of stumble around the beauty community. I don't get out much places. I spend most of my time at the research desk. And so this is my experience that I'm at uh, through the computer. This is how I experience these different things. Anyways, uh, that's it for this segment. And this that's it for this uh, episode of uh, Beauty and the Geek. I will see you next week. That's right. We are now back on schedule. Let's see if we can get to next week. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Democratic Earth. Earth.